All right, so in this video, we're going to be looking at how to create histograms in base R. And again, we're going to be using this inflation rate data that I used in uh, previous videos. And for histograms, of course, you need numerical data, one set of it. And uh, so I reload the data. And then if you just create a histogram with the hist function, then again, the defaults will be there. It'll just, the title will just be by default histogram of whatever your variable name is. Uh, you have your frequency and your inflation rate. And this is our data. Now, we can add a title and X labels. We can also specify the range of our X axis. So how wide do we want this axis to be? We can change the color of our bars. And uh, we can change the frequency to be either true or false here. So let's go ahead and run that. Now, when you, again, we notice uh, we expanded the axis a little bit. So the histogram is a little bit more in the center. Um, when you set frequency equal to false, then you get a density value. So a percentage of the data rather than a count. Um, whereas when you set it to be equal to true, then you get that count data. Now, you can also adjust the number of breaks that you want in the graph. So this has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bins by default. And typically these are selected based on the number of values in the data set, but you can play around with different numbers of breaks. So if I only want three breaks, that'll give me four bins. And so if I run that example, then again, this is something so that you can experiment with it a little bit. Um, oh, three bins, we got three bins here. Again, if you break it at different numbers, you can, um, um, if you break it at different values, then you can get different numbers of breaks. Now, uh, you can break it at too many. There's a rule of thumb about being between 5 and 20 bins, depending on the amount of data. If you do too many breaks, then you get something that looks a little choppy and hard to see the nice distribution. Um, so generally, again, this is, you want to experiment with this a little bit in order to see what the appropriate number of breaks is for your particular data set. Um, we can, of course, change the color of our graph. And we can also, if we want, specify the breaks to be at specific locations. Um, now, this allows us to have breaks that are at unevenly spaced intervals. Now, typically, you don't really want this for a histogram. Um, you want them to be evenly spaced, but this is something that you are you can do in the hist function. So here I have all the values between 8 and 16 are all lumped into a single bin. And um, all the values between 4 and 8 are lumped into a single bin but the values between zero and one are in their own bin. So we have different widths going on here. Again, this is not typically something that you want to do in a histogram because it can be misleading, but it is something that the function can do. Now we can also add um, density curves to our graph. So if I create a histogram, I can apply the density curve calculated for this to the graph. Now, uh, if you have the frequency and not the density, then this is not going to be on the same scale. So you would want to set frequency equal to false. And then the density curve will plot at the same scale on top of that curve. And then finally, um, you can adjust the, the, again, the range of your limits. 
um, and you can adjust them in this case wider than the actual data or you can focus in on a particular section of the histogram and narrow the focus a little bit. So cut off those outlier values. 